Hey, hello guys, this is Karthik from ExitAutomation.com and this is part 24 of our Coder UI video series. And in this part, we're going to start working with the test contest to identify the state of test method which you are executing. So before watching this part, I would request you to watch part 7 and part 23 since this part is going to have some dependency from part 7 and 23. Test contest. We have already discussed about test contest in part 7 of this video series while trying to fetch some data from a CSV file using data source attribute. So I would request you to watch part 7 to understand about reading data from external data source using data source attribute and also retrieving value out using test contest class. Test contest class provides the information and functionality for current test run. If you have already watched my video series on SpecFlow, we discussed about something called scenario contest, where the scenario contest keep track of each and every current scenario which it's executing. So the same can be done using test contest class, where it keeps tracks of each and every test which is executing currently. So test contest class will have the information and functionality of the current test run. We can leverage the test contest class to get the state of a test method as shown here. You can see that whether the test is failed or whether it has some error or whether it is, is it aborted or whether the test method is passed or is it failed because of timeout or due to some unknown reason. So all these states we can get out from the test contest dot current test outcome property. So test contest class is very very helpful while working with Coder UI testing and also while building a bigger framework which we will build later in the video of this video series. So let's flip to Visual Studio. So this is the same project which we have been working so long. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to leverage the test contest class a little bit here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to see what is the state of each and every test method. And, and I'm very much interested like taking a screenshot if a test method fails. So just consider a real time scenario. Let's say you have these functionalities like login, setting, logout and admin. And let's say the test has got failed in settings functionality. And you want to take a screenshot for that. So in each and every test method, you cannot write the capture screenshot functionality since that's going to be a duplication of code for each and every method. Rather, you can write that very intelligently in test cleanup. But if you write that in a test cleanup method, so every time even if the test does not fails, that screenshot will be captured. So how do we identify whether the test method has really got failed or not? So that you can do using the test contest class. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to write a condition here like if test contest. So this is the property which is already defined right here. Right? All right. So test contest dot there is one more property called current test outcome. So this will be very helpful to understand what is the outcome of a test method which is it's running. So it already clearly specifies that you can use this property in a test cleanup method to determine the output of a test that it has run. So I'm going to use this property current test outcome and there is a enumerator available called unit test outcome. And then you can see there are a lot of states available like whether is it aborted or whether it has got any error or whether the method has got failed or whether it is inconclusive or whether it is in progress and so on and so forth. So I'm going to say if my test method has got an error, right, then 
try to take a screenshot of that particular window, right? So we have already wrote the code to take screenshot in the browser window part of this video series. So I'm going to just copy paste this code as you can see here. So in the browser window, I have the code to capture the image and save it as an image file. So I'm going to take that. I'm going to paste it right here. But I cannot use this window. Rather, I can use UI test control dot desktop dot capture image method. Great. So this will capture the image for me and it will return the image as you can see here and then it will save in my D colon. Great. Captured, let's say, error. Great. So this will capture the image for me if any test got fails. Right. So I'm going to just run this scenario which we created in the last part of this video series and I'm just running this. As you know that our test has got no error right now. So there won't be any image. So even if I go to my D colon, you can see that there is no such files created. Great. So how should we create an error for this particular test method? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just throw a exception here. So throw a new exception. A very very generic exception so I'm just going to throw for the let's say settings so now let me just clear this solution all right and then let me go to this explorer and just pull this test all right so now if I just try to run this instead of running the order test I'm just going to run all the tests right now and see if I get any error there. All right. Great. Now you can see there is one test which got failed in the settings right here since we have thrown an exception here. Right. And so if there is any exception, then surely we should have a screenshot in my D column. Let's see that. Oops. Do you see that? I don't have a image in my T column right now and I know what the reason is. So let me just hit the breakpoint there and see what is the outcome which is coming for this guy for my current test run. So let me just clean the build once again and let's try to build this project once again and just try to debug the selected tests. Great and now the test will get passed for the first test. So I'm just going to ignore this right now. So let's continue this. And it comes to the second test right now. Okay, it has come to the second test. It's again passed. Now it comes to the third test. And we see what is the outcome. It's again passed. Now you can see when it comes to the settings, it has got failed. Instead of unit test outcome dot errors, we should write the failed enumerator here. So this is the value which we should pass here. So we should not select error there, rather we should select the failed. So if the test got failed due to any exception, then capture the image for me, right? So now if I continue this test, all right, now if I go here, can you see there is a captured image.jpg created for us? Now if I open this, you can see that it has captured the screenshot of my desktop right now. Right? So this is how you can capture an image if any test got fail in the middle of your execution. Right? Similarly, I can put any number of throw new exception. So currently it's in settings. Maybe during the logout functionality, if I get any exception, just, you know, try to take one more screenshot for me. Uh, but the problem is uh, it every time overwrite the image name. So what you should do is you should somehow get the current method name and then create the image name based on your test method name. That you can do by using again 
there is a property called test name in the test context so you can do that way as well so what I'm going to do is instead of this captured error.jpg file just hard coded I'm going to dynamically get the test name test method name using test contest so there is a test contest dot there is a property called test name can you see that here right so this will get the test name so I'm going to get that as well and then I'm going to concatenate that with the extension of the file great and now if there are two test methods even if they execute they will be captured based on their names so now we will not have this captured error.jpg file rather we will have the test method name itself so let me just try to run the test once again so I'm going to just clean the solution I'm going to build the solution and then I'm going to run all the tests once again And now you can see there are two tests failed. One is logout and another one is settings. Now if I go to this D colon, you can see it has captured two images for me. One is logout and another one is settings. So based on the test method name, it is creating the screenshot for us. Right? See the screenshot is changing for each and everything. Great. So that's it guys. So this is how you can leverage the power of your test contest class in your code or UI testing and this is very very helpful when you start building a bigger frameworks that's it guys so thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day